Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Today, as we're celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday, we want to look at just a really simple lesson that we can pull from our Gospels today. Uh, sometimes, though, the, the simple ones are the hardest ones to live, right? But we'll just kind of draw this out and uh, see how we can apply it to our life. But we want to just look at really simply and briefly um, the gift of forgiveness and the great responsibility of forgiveness. So the gift of forgiveness that we have from our Father that we, receive, we can receive, but then that responsibility that we have to then go and extend that same forgiveness to those around us in our lives. So we want to look at this, this is one of the, because this is one of the first things Jesus brings out when he appears in this resurrection appearance today in our Gospels. So we see, um, uh, first it's important to point out, when Jesus appears, it says, when he, when he appeared, he said to them, peace be with you, and then he showed his hands and his side, and um, this all happened to the disciples. So we first just want to recognize our audience. Our de, who is Jesus talking to? He's not talking to the 12. He's not, talk, he's, he's not talking to the crowd. He's not talking to Jewish leaders. He's talking to the disciples here who believe in him, who are behind locked doors. That means he's talking to you and I, because we're disciples too. Right? If he was only talking to the 12, then everything he says today would only be for bishops, basically. But no, it's to disciples, so it's for all of us gathered here. And the first thing he does, first thing he gives to, to the disciples in this resurrection appearance is peace. So he comes and he extends peace. And it's not just a saying, but it's actually a blessing. Peace be with you. It's something he's imparting, he's giving out. And so anytime we say peace, we don't want to be like, oh, yeah, peace be with you, oh, I'm with your spirit, oh, yeah, you too, you know. But actually try to mean it sincerely and actually impart or give peace from within us to whoever we're speaking it to. That's how Jesus does it. Um, <clears throat> the, right after this, the, the next thing Jesus gives besides peace is, uh, and we, this starts to be a pattern, actually, from, especially from the resurrection on, is everything that Jesus has and is, he begins to give over to us. It's a pattern that, and, and so right away we see the mission that he has from his Father, he gives to us. He says, just as the Father sent me, so I send you. And remember, it's, he's talking to all disciples. So all of us are called, we're all now given the same mission as Jesus, we're all sent. We've been hearing in our, our advanced discipleship training on Monday nights that, um, you, you know, it's a, sometimes people think you need a special calling, a missionary calling to be sent out to go proclaim the gospel. But actually, we're all sent to proclaim the gospel. What you, if, what you actually need is a special calling not to go. If God is calling you to stay where you are, most of the time we just stay where we are and think, oh, well, if he calls me, if he wants me, I'll, I'll go. He's got to call me, though. Here he is. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. So we all, every disciple is given peace, resurrection peace. Every disciple is given the same mission as Jesus. As, as the Father sent me, now I send you. And now every disciple is given, um, we know especially at confirmation, baptism, but especially confirmation, we're given the Holy Spirit of God to accomplish this mission. So when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So one of the reasons we, got, we receive the Holy Spirit is to accomplish the mission. Another reason is right now, right here, the power of forgiveness. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained. <clears throat> the great power of forgiveness and the great responsibility. Remember, he's talking to disciples. So this is for everybody. Every single disciple has the power to forgive sins or to retain, to, to withhold forgiveness of sins. That's powerful. Now, let's pull in some extra teaching of Jesus from uh, the other gospels so we see what we're supposed to do with this. <clears throat> Remember one of the sayings uh, Jesus said, be merciful 
as your heavenly Father is merciful. So um, sometimes people use mercy and forgiveness interchangeably, but it's really not. Mercy includes forgiveness, but it's more than forgiveness. But when we say mercy, we're, we're also speaking of forgiveness. So when we say, uh, when Jesus says, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful, we can also just simply say, forgive as your heavenly Father forgives. And we know we've been talking about how our Father forgives us through the reading, writings of St. Paul during Lenten season on, on the weekends. A couple of times we looked at just the Old Testament, even the Old Testament, where we looked at those promises that God gave where he said, in the new covenant, I will, I will remember their sins no more. Now you and I know sometimes it's easy to forgive somebody Sometimes you just feel inside, I can't do it. I can't do it, Lord, if you're going to have to help me on this one. Right? Hence the reason why God gives you the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes you're like, I just can't do this on my own strength. Jesus, you're going to have to help me. Well, good news, we have the Holy Spirit to help us. So, it's almost like we get the power to forgive or not to forgive, and then we're given that teaching, forgive as your father forgives. It's almost like, remember the first time you were old enough to get a driver's license, you're, and your parents gave you keys to a car, and it's like, you know, here you go. You can go 100 miles an hour, you can go 100 miles an hour, or you can go the speed limit, drive like I taught you to drive, <laughs> right? You can forgive or not forgive. Forgive like your father forgives. And then we have more teaching from Jesus. Remember Matthew chapter 6. It's right in the middle of the Beatitudes. Uh, Jesus teaches, he commands us really, how to pray the Our Father prayer. And so when we're praying the Our Father prayer, remember there's that line. This is is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9. And there's that line in the Our Father prayer where he says, we pray, Our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So Jesus is getting us on the hook, right? Forgive, where he teaches us to ask the Father, forgive me in the same way that I'm forgiving somebody else. If you, if you doubt that's what he means, just keep reading. And when you get to Matthew chapter 6, just five verses down, verse 14, then Jesus literally says, if you, forgive the, if you forgive the sins of men, then your Father will forgive you. If you do not forgive the sins of men, then your heavenly Father will not forgive you. Period. So we have the power to forgive or not to forgive, and the instructions to forgive like our Father forgives. And in fact, we're told, if you, you can choose not to forgive, but if you do not forgive, then your Heavenly Father will not forgive you. So you can do what you want to do, but it will also be done unto you. Jesus gives pretty good motivation to forgive, huh? This is heavenly teaching for heavenly living. Remember in the Our Father prayer, we are called to live on earth. We we pray, Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're called to live on earth in the same way they live in heaven. We're called to live the heavenly life while we're here on earth. And if we just think about it logically, is there any unforgiveness in heaven? No, right? I mean, can, can you imagine you're hanging out there in heaven, you're watching the pearly gates, somebody walks in, and you're like, that guy? You let that guy in here? Ooh, I'm still mad at them for what they did, you know. <laughs> no, that doesn't exist in heaven, right? You, we can't get into heaven with unforgiveness because there's no unforgiveness in heaven. Another good motivation <laughs> to forgive. Hence what we said at the beginning. It's a great power. It's a great gift from our Father. But forgiveness is also a great responsibility to extend it to those around us. 
What will you do with this great gift and responsibility today?